Sabbath, everyone? All right, shall I begin with a word of silent prayer? Amen. All right, we're going to start off with these two quotes that are basic principles that we, that we already know. So from Review and Herald, um, October 17th, 1907, paragraph 11, says, God's work is the same in what? All time. Although there are different degrees of, of development and different manifestations of his power to meet the wants of men in different ages. That's what Kanar was going over last night as well. And in each time, each man, in, in each time and age, each one had, had a message for their time and they had a foundation for their time. They had, they had milk for their time and they had strong meat for their time. And the Lord always makes it plain. A amen. And the Lord always makes it plain. The Lord makes plain what the milk is and the Lord makes plain what the strong meat is. Because God has to show men exactly what they need before the door shuts. So, and the strong meat is always that thing, thing he shows just before the door shuts. It's the last message. It's the plainest message there is. <clears throat> so, as she says here, God's work is the same in all time. Although different degrees of, of development and different manifestations of his power, but it's just all the same. Just in, it's all the same thing in different ages. Continuing on, says, beginning with the first gospel promise and coming down through the patriarchal and Jewish ages, and and even even to the present time, there there has been a gradual unfolding of the purposes of God and the plan of redemption. The the Savior. The okay, yes, we stop there. So we know. Hold on, get a different marker. So fifth day, fourth month is the sign. So we know from past studies, so forth, that this is the point. Sorry, the ten is the point which we're coming up to. This this test here, and that we're coming up to. And 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 this time, the Lord the, the Lord will go forward and sh and manifest His power. He will send light at that time, for for that time. And we need to receive this light before this door shuts. So, so the Lord will then send us strong meat then, because just, just before the door shuts, and we know in Genesis 19, at this point, this is when the angels shut, shut the door to the man outside, and they were left outside blind in darkness. So, so the, the, these things we have to understand, you know, understand the Lord's rules and how he manifests, him, manifests himself in each age. Go down to the next quote. <clears throat> Um, says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Says, the, the t -t 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 teacher is the same in both dispensations, in the old and in the new, in the Levitical um, and the gospel. Says, God's claims are the same. The principles of his government are the same. For, for, all, all, for all proceed from him, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Okay, jumping down, next bold, says the Bible has what? Accumulated and bound up together its treasures for this last generation. All, all the great events and solemn transactions of the Old Testament history have been and are repeating themselves in the church in these last days. Continuing on, next bold, there, there the whole accumulated truths are, 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 amen, are, 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 are Presented, amen, and forced to us that, that, that we may profit by the teachings. We are under the influence of the whole. So all these truths will be accumulated and bound up for us at this point even more. We will see it in a, in a, in a um, larger fashion, in a larger degree. 
So this is why we need to understand the Yod. And um, Kanar was going over last night that <clears throat> when, you, when you come to a... Just in, in short terms, you have to understand the Yod before you understand the New. So we have to have a, a firm grasp on all the old things the Lord has shown us before he sends this new thing. Because if you come up to the new and you reject it, it means that you never really possess the old. Because the old and new is just one and the same. Okay. Um, last bold says, concentrating all the influence of the past with new and, and, and increased light of the present. Uh, accrued power is, is what? Given to all who will follow the light. So now, this accrued power and all this light will be given on to us once we accept the light. Their faith will their, their faith will increase and be brought brought exercise, amen, at at the present time. Awakening and and a, 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 a energy and 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 excuse me and, amen and and intensely increase earnestness and and through hmm? oh. and through excuse me and through deep dependence upon God for his power to and amen and and send, and send the l l light of the Son of, r Amen. To the ends of the earth. So, so these we just have these quotes here. This just to shows that the the old is needful, and when you understand the old, <clears throat> the new will be easy to be understood and grasped as well. So, I'm gonna go over. Um, I'm going to go over how we come to this, this 10 in the first place and, and some other points as well, 54th month and whatnot. So all these things, we, these quotes we have read before, these have been in previous notes and whatnot. So Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Can someone read this quote, please? Okay, in its fullest sense, what is the day of the Lord? Those are all right answers in, in some sense. But the one I'm looking for is the second coming. The day of the Lord is hastening greatly because she said we are to hasten Christ's second coming as well. So we know um, so that midway is this second coming. Amen. Yes, in tight. But the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will give us, the Lord will show us. I don't want to say it. The Lord is going to show us how, how he will come in, in all these types. And we know at every point of this little time of peace shows, shows the second coming. The beginning of this, of, of this time of peace shows us the second coming. So, go ahead. So, for nine, that means at the beginning of the ten, that's Christ's first coming. Mm -hmm. Christ's yes. first coming is to save you from sin. Amen. And second coming is to save you from Satan's power. Without. without. Amen. I don't know. Amen. And there's this quote that, that she states, I think it's in COL. She says that before, before we are saved from, from sin without, we must be saved from sin where? Within. Within. So it's the same thing that Kanar was saying. So at, at the 10, this is when Christ is coming. The first time it says kingdom of grace. Let me just write it small here. Kingdom of grace. Because the kingdom of grace is to save you from sin within. And, um, and then he'll come and save you without. from all, um, Save you from sin that is without all the troubles and the calamities around you. But, but you must be saved from sin within first. So... We must hasten the second coming. And all these points are types of second coming. Anytime the, 
a little time of peace begins. This is a type of the second coming because when Christ comes, he saves us from sin without and brings us into heaven for how long? A thousand years. This is a little time of peace because then after that, because that thousand years is just one day. So after that one day, which is just a little time of peace, you're plunged right back into trouble because now God and the saints have to come back to earth and now cleanse the earth. So now it's the second, second test of um, second cleansing of, of the earth, basically. Following? That's nice. Um, I know these are deep things, but that's why you can have a thousand events happen at one time. Amen. To God, it's just one day. Amen. So yes. All, that's why all that, that time, all these things happen right here. Amen. It's just one day. One day to, to God is as a, a thousand years. Yes. Did I say it backwards? Or is a thousand years is a day to God? Oh, yeah, it is the same thing. Yes. All right. So, real quick. So, we have these two. Something we went over previously. You have trouble. Then you have a little time of peace. Then you have trouble again. And in the largest sense, you can see this trouble before Christ comes a second time, as, as we just said. You can see this whole period as, as a time period from, from, from since Adam fell down to Christ's second coming. That's one time of trouble. Then a thousand years. Then the saints come back as, as it is written in Revelation um, 20. After Satan is loose for this thousand, um, after the thousand years to go deceive the nations again. And then this is a time of trouble again because you have to go and deal with sin once more. And then at the end, Christ, Christ eradicates sin and sinners from the earth. Following? There's a change of government. Amen. It's a change of government. Yes, that's, that's another point. The government changes the second trouble. Amen. It, it, at, at each end, there's a change in government as well. And this is what we saw at 9-11. Because if you line up 1989, 96, 9-11, 9-11, there was a change of government. Went from English law to Roman law because the Patriot Act was put in place. Go ahead, Quentin. Yes. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay. So, all right. Now that um, I know I haven't went went through all the proofs, but we have prior studies that show that have newsletters and stuff written up upon it, and if anything, we can go over it after as well. But just to um, just just for now, we see that this point is this second coming, because this is the end of one trouble. Anytime Christ comes second time. It's showing this end of one trouble. It's what happened on August 11, 1840. When Christ came down upon the earth with his right foot upon the sea and left foot upon the earth, it's just showing his coming. And, and this was a little time of peace onto the, on, onto the Advent people because it was proven and clearly shown that the Advent message was, was correct. And now everybody can see that the Advent message is correct. And now, and now those who fought it now their their mouths now stopped because they saw that it was correct so now they are in this little time of peace there, there, there's no people coming against them so much at as much as prior amen amen if you don't, then that spirit is going to manifest itself back again. In the second. Amen. So, and um, just as Kanar was just saying, let's go to Revelation 20. It's not in the notes. Like I said, I'm not planning on staying so much in notes, but just uh, that we all grasp the all, we all grasp the same things. We understand the same things. Revelation 20, go to verse 7. We, re we will read 7 and 8 and 9. Is everyone there? Revelation 20, verse 7. Okay, so just as Kanar was just stating that Satan is just coming. Satan's coming to bring back trouble upon the earth again. And and all these things, um, Kanar also sent this quote. It says, when, when you're speaking of rules, this applies to individuals, churches, and nations. It, it applies to all of them one time. So... So when Satan comes back to trouble the earth, he's going to trouble individuals, um, churches, and nations. This is what, what he, this is what he does. 
So verse 7, it says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So in this thousand years, this is a prison to, to Satan, but, but now this is, this is a refuge and a freedom to God's people. It's an opposite. It says, so, and then when this trouble comes back, Satan wants to flip this, flip, flip, the, um, flip the structure of how it was in the little town of peace. Because he, he's in prison and God, God's people are free. So he comes here and wants to flip that so that he can be free and God's people can be in prison. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Amen. Yes. In the 1260s, it's Satan, the papacy, going to and fro in the earth, troubling Try, the earth, mm -hmm. but he's not, he cannot trouble the two witnesses. Amen. The witnesses are, they, they have the peace of God. They have the oil. You know, Amen. They, they're hidden with God. Amen. So, um, the scriptures just, just as Kamara was saying, the scriptures gave us a, a symbol that prison is, it, the thousand years is a prison. So anytime you see someone locked up in, in prison, you can, you can go and try to search and see if these, these things um, connect and correlate. So, after he's loosed out of his prison, verse 8, and shall go out to do what? Deceive. Okay. And what is the freedom that we really long for? Freedom from what? From sin. So, Satan's going to come back in the second time of trouble to bring you in, in, in bondage to the sin in which you were freed from in the beginning. All right? This is, this, is, this is what Satan wants to do every time. He sees that you're freed, but then he'll try to bring you back. Because when the Israelites le left Egypt, some of them thought to go back, back, back to the same bondage in which, which they were in in Egypt. Because they thought the wilderness wanderings what was, was too hard for them. It says, And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So, this will be another compassing about. Satan's going to come and try to compass, his, um, compass God's people here with, on, on all points. They tried um, financial, um, social, and He'll try you on all points just, just so that you can go back into the same sin in which you were just freed from. To go back to your vomit as a dog. So, back to the notes now. Um, can someone read Advocate, November 1st, 1900, paragraph 3? I shall read it. It says, sound and alarm through the length and breadth of the earth. It says, Tell the people that 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 the day of the Lord is near and hasteth greatly. Let none be left what unwarned. So before the second coming comes, there must be a warning telling men that the second coming is coming. Correct. All right. And this is what the, um this is what happened in Advent history. They, amen. Um. Uh, when this. Gospel is preached yeah, into all the world and for witness, and then the end comes. So it, you, the message must be given to all first, then the end, and Christ is the end. He, he says that he is the beginning and the end. So, so the message must be spread abroad first, then the end comes. All right. Jump down to... PH, pamphlet 005, page 5, paragraph 3. Can someone read the bold portion, please? We must give this message quickly, line upon line, precept upon precept. Men will soon be forced to great decisions, and it is our duty to see that they are given an opportunity to understand the truth, that they may take their stand intelligently on the right side. Okay. So, the message must go, go forward so that Men, men can choose for Christ or for Barabbas. Next paragraph, CET, 243, paragraph 7. Can I someone read this as well? The rapid fulfillment of the predictions of the Holy Scripture regarding the signs and events were, marked the, were to mark the closing scenes of Earth's history. It is a sure evidence that we are now living in the last days. 
Therefore, a company of Christian people who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy, this day being a Christian, where may they be found? Okay. Amen. So there must be a people living in the time when they see the rapid fulfillment of the predictions of the Holy Scripture regarding the signs and events which are to mark the closing scenes of this earth's history. There must be a people there to tell men what time it is, basically. So in the sense, there must be a people. Amen. And, and they must be distinct from, from everybody. everybody. Amen. So, just as Kanar was saying, when this 10 comes, if we're faithful, we will be that. We will tell men exactly what, what is soon, soon to take place upon this earth. We must tell men what time it is. Because we are, um, we are the watchmen to tell them what of the night, basically. Okay, so we have to understand the rapid fulfillment of the predictions of the Holy Scriptures. We have to understand that. And, 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 and if we do not, we cannot tell them what time it is. All right, next quote. Um... The underlying portion only says, God would have us study the events that are taking place around us and, and do what? Compare them with the predictions of his word in order that we may understand that we are living in the last days. So there must be a people on earth to take God's word, to see what is happening in earth right now, and to compare it with his word. Because all things are written in his word. Okay. Um, last quote under this, under, under the head and prediction. Someone read this sentence, please. Review on Herod, Mark 26. And as we see these predictions being fulfilled before our eyes, may we be led to a more earnest study of the scriptures and to a determination, and to a determination to believe and to teach the word of the living God. Amen. All right. So we have seen scripture being fulfilled. 54th month at this time when Biden stood up as president as well. We've seen scripture being fulfilled because it followed the same plan that was written in his word. So when we see these things being fulfilled, we, as she says here, that we must be led to a more earnest study of the scriptures and to believe and teach the, the word of the living God. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The first part of the ten is really for this movement. Amen. Because we're gonna, oh, we yes. should see something fulfilled right there. Mm -hmm. Earnestly begin searching the scriptures because we know, man, the Lord is sending something right now. Amen. In relation to it, but the, the next one, next. that's for everybody else because the gospel is mm. being now preached to them. Amen. And now they see it fulfilled. Now they gotta turn to the Bible. Amen. And begin search because they're not gonna understand the beginning of the ten. They, no. They, they, they're no. Not really anything right now. Amen. So, go ahead. So, in the beginning of the 10, we could show Mordecai perceiving their... Yes, yes, day. amen. Yes. All right. Yeah, he lifts up his voice like, like a trumpet. Um, so, we know Adventism was founded upon a fulfillment of God's word on August 11, 1840. Therefore, at the end, it should be what? The very same thing. It was, it was, it was like that in the beginning. And Christ is the beginning and the end. And at the end, it's going to be the very same thing. So, the Lord's going to raise up seven-day Adventists based upon the fulfillment of, of the predictions of His Word. It's the same. It's going to be the very same thing. But before we are loosed from, from our prison, from, from sin, um, trials must come. Can someone read this quote, please? GC 633.1. Every thorn that wounds our feet has wounded his. Every cross that we are called to bear, he has borne before us. The Lord permits conflict to prepare the soul for peace. The time of trouble is a fearful ordeal for God's people, but it is the time for every true believer to look up, and by faith he may see the bowl of promise encircling him. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, so the Lord permits these conflicts to take up. To, to take place so that so that our soul can be um, prepared 
for peace. So this conflict, this last conflict here is going to be a, a severe pressing conflict. But we must keep in mind, as this quote says, we have to look up because our redemption draw off nigh. Because peace is coming. Following? And, and everybody will have a test. And we have to realize that. But we always, there's always this promise. Once you're in, in this test, we know that there is a way out because the Lord does not test you more than you can bear. So once you're in it, you, you can be assured that you can pass it if you just hold on to Christ. That's the only way. So that, that promise is always there for us. So now I'm going to go back to how we even came to, to these points that we have on the board now. So if y'all, if anyone remembers, um, I might have to draw another line. Yes, I'm going to draw another line now. All right. So previously, when we first... Learn about these points. We had it um, 2016. Then we had, um, this is the prediction, which is the same thing as the fifth day, fourth month, just another name. Then we had midway. So, all right, go Ezekiel 1 1. I'm just going to take the couple points from here. It says, it says, in the, fifth, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. So we um, attributed this verse to, to, this, to this point right here, this, to the prediction. The heavens opened. And this is where we got the, this fifth day, fourth month from. Because when the heavens opened and the Lord um, gave us an light on his second coming on the end. Because this is what Ezekiel was getting. Ezekiel, Daniel, John, Jeremiah, all the prophets received this same vision in the second coming of Christ. And um, another point, actually, before we go there. Um, we know fifth, the fifth day, fourth month was... In the time of Advent history is what actually I will ask that question. The fifth day, fourth month in in um Advent history was what what the date? July twenty first. Okay, because the first day, of the fifth month was August fifteenth, and that was the midnight cry. Do we all understand that point? What what is it? What point? Okay. All right, so, all right, let's go to, let me just find this quote first. Tenth day. Let's go to, it's not in the notes, GC 399.4. Perfectly fine, you just go over these bullet points. GC 399.4, Great Controversy, page 399, paragraph 4. Everyone there? <clears throat> Start with, um, okay, actually, Althea, can you read this, read, read the quote? Okay, so what is our subject here? It's our subject. Types. Hmm? Types. Amen. The types where? Relation to the second In the symbolic service. But go ahead. Uh, under the Mosaic system, the cleansing of the sanctuary or the great day of atonement occurred on the tenth day of the seventh Jewish month. All right, we can stop there. So the great day of atonement... Occurred when, as she said? Tenth day of the what? Seventh month. Okay. So I'll put that here. Tenth day, seventh month. 10D, 7M. Tenth day, seventh month is the, I'll put DOA for short, day 
of atonement. Following? Okay. And um go ahead. The mill the the Millerites found Christ. The tenth day of the seventh yes. they found him. Mm -hmm. And that's why they ate it at the midnight cry. Now they can take the book. They found the Christ. Oh yes, they amen. Come. Now they can eat the book and amen. come into the and then and then receive rest yeah, the sabbath yeah, yeah. amen okay so the day of atonement occurred on the 10th day of seventh month back in in the time of moses joshua um in the time of judges the time of the kings all those times so and the anti-type happened on october 22nd 1844 correct of the um day of atonement 10 22, 1844. It was the judgment of the dead began. It's the judgment of the dead. It is going to pass from the dead onto the living. Okay. And, and then she tells us exactly. It says, if you jump down close to the end, the second to last sentence. And it starts the 10th day of the 7th month. That's it. All right. So she told us exactly the 10th day of the 7th month, what happened on the on the, the 22nd day of October. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have clearly um, cl clear proof that the 10th of the 7th month is October 22nd, 1844. So now now we're just going to work backwards from here. So. um. OK. So when they receive, they, they first received this date that Christ was going to come on October 22nd, 1844, on August 15th, 1844, when the midnight cry went forth. Let me just find that quote. Midnight cry. Um... Go to Does anyone know the quote top they had where it is? Speak about the, um in the summer I just actually it's summer eighteen forty four, she says. Okay, yes, midway. Yes, midway between the first time we have. Yes. All right. Okay. Doo -doo. Sorry. All right. Go to GC three nine eight point three. That's just just a little bit up. GC page three nine eight point three. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. In the summer of 1844, midway between the time when, when it had first been thought that the 2300 days would end and the autumn of the same year to which, to which it afterward found, found that, 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 they, that they, they extended the message... The, the message was was p p proclaimed in the very words of scripture behold the bridegroom cometh so all right so actually let's come here midway i'll show why I'm doing this midway before the message went forth behold the bridegroom cometh okay and then Hold on.
OK, yes. So this message was, was first preached in the, in, the, in the summer of 1844, midway between when they first thought, the first thought and the second, that the second time they thought when Christ was going to come. And the first time they thought that Christ was going to come was on April 19th, 1844. This was the, the first disappointment. April 19th, 1844. So it's the first time, and then this was the second time they thought Christ was going to come. And midway between that brings us down to July 21st. And, um, oh, I'm just my thought, hold up. Okay, yes. So this is why we have this here on the chart, on the 1843 chart. That Christ is going to come on 1843, but, um, and this was April 9th, April 18th to 19th. The eight, April 18th was the last day of this, of this Jewish year, 1843. And April 19th was the first, was the first day of the, was the first day of the Jewish year. So this is why we call April 19th the first day of the first month. Because... All right, the 18th, it's the 19th. This was the end. This side was the end of one year. This was the beginning of the other year. But this is the Jewish year. Because the Jewish time, they, they went through cycles of 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30. That's how their months ran instead of 30, um, instead of how we have it now with some months are scattered, some 28, 30, 31, so forth. So the 18th, the 18th was the end of the year, and the 19th was the beginning. So this is the beginning of that year. It's the first day of the first month, and this is the 10th day of the seventh month. And directly middle of, the, of, these, um, yeah, of these two dates is July 21st. It is it's the fifth day of the fourth month in these, um, of these 10 months here. S yeah, seven months, sorry, yes. Okay, yes. These seven months here, the direct middle is the fifth day of the fourth month. All right? And another point, just to add in there, the midnight cry. Um, anyone remember the witnesses for the fifth day, the first day of the fifth month, August 15th? No, um... I was trying to remember. It was something specific. One I'm trying to remember, but nonetheless. Yes. Ah, yes, that was it. Okay. All right. So we'll go over the the times after a little more too. First day month, but midway between. The first time they thought Christ was going to appear, and the second time they thought Christ was going to appear is the fifth day, fourth month. And if you count count each each day, it lines up perfectly as half and half. the The days line up perfectly as half and half. So this is why we come to the, it's the fifth day of the fourth Jewish month, as, as she says. This was the tenth day of the seventh Jewish month. Yeah, All right. As of seven nine, yes. That was it, yes. Amen. Thank you, yes. Ezra 7, 9, I don't know how I forgot that, but praise God. So, on the first day of first month, in Ezra, Ezra chapter 7, 9, tells us that on the first day of first month, began he to go up from Babylon. And the message at that time in Millerite history was, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So, so, it's the second angel here, second angel's message, and it's telling you to come out of Babylon. And this is what Ezra did on the first day of the first month. So this is why we applied the first day, first month as well to the to April nineteenth. Understand? And it's like when you go to their history, Samuel Snow was the one who was the messenger. Amen. He was him and Charles Bush was coming out of Babylon. Amen. They understood it. They were the first ones to understand. Amen. And Babylon was those who have rejected. who had rejected the first angel's message. Those those um, churches who, who had departed from, from the truth, they are Babylon. And Ezra left on the first of the first month, and an and, and Advent people left on the first day of the first month. And then 
says, On the fifth day, on the first day of the fifth month, came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. So, now, when you, I'm not, I won't find the quotes now and bring it up, but I can search for these quotes after. So, Ezra came on the first day of the fifth month to Jerusalem. And Sister White connects the midnight cry message to Christ coming to Jerusalem on the trial for entry. Following? It's in this, this quote in early writings, um, 258, 259. And this is why we come to this date, the midnight cry in midnight history as well, and, called, and we apply the first day of the fifth month. Because Sister White connects the midnight cry message in, in her time, August 15th, 1844, to the triumphal entry of Christ when he came to Jerusalem. This is exactly what happened with Ezra. So we have to have these three histories all showing the same thing. This follows the same, um, same proof, the, the same principle in which we read that God's work in all ages is the same. So we take the line of Ezra, the line of Christ, and, and the time of, time of the Millerites. They all show the very same thing, that this time is showing this triumphal entry. It's this message going forward that everyone knows that Christ is coming. Following? Go ahead, Swindon. Mm -hmm. Amen, yes. We saw the tiring time. Mm -hmm. At the same point where they saw the, the tiring time marching the first day of the first Amen. And Swin is re referencing Ezra 8, uh, 15, I believe, where when they tarried at the river of Hava, and the Millerites then understood that they were in a tiring time, as he said. Okay. So, all right. Um. All right. Following, okay, we can go over a little more after, just to look at all the texts and quotes and so forth, to, to really n nail it into a short place. So, Ezekiel 1.1 1, 1 tells us, back to the notes, tells us that on the fourth month and the fifth day of the month, the heavens were open and you saw visions of God. So, um, this is what, 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 what the Millerites saw as well on July 21st. They saw the coming of Christ. So likewise, in our history, we were seeing at, at this point the end because we applied the second coming to Midway. And at this point, the fifth day, fourth month, for us in our history, we're seeing the end. We're seeing when Christ will come and give us this little time of peace. Following? Okay. So, continue on in notes, 5T, 753, paragraph 1. Okay, so I'll read the bolded portion of that quote. I just need that portion. The bright, the one who's bright? Um, 5T, 753.3. In the vision, mm-hmm. All right. So now she takes who? Isaiah. Okay, she takes these three Bible characters and connects them all because she is following the same rule in which in which the Lord told her that and God told her that his work in all ages is the same. And now we must go and take what Sister White said from from what she got from God and God said his work in all ages is the same. So we're taking all three of these histories in the time of Isaiah, Ezekiel, and John. And now we'll see that they, they had all received the very same thing. God, God tied these, these three, three as one, and we must, we must keep it that way. So, so now let's look at the visions of, of John. Go, go down to Revelation 1, <clears throat> verse 1, 4, 7, and 8. Okay. Someone read these verses for me, please. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. 
John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they, they also which pierced him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, nice. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. So what rule is God um, highlighting here the most? Or what rule does he show forth here in verse 8? Alpha and Omega. This is what God wants to show us. And she tells us that all the books of the Bible meet and end in the what? Revelation. So every book in God's word is telling us about God being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. So we see that John received this. Um, Christ revealed himself unto John. And John was to give this message to the seven churches. <clears throat> and, and when John saw Christ, the first thing he said was, Behold, he cometh with what? Clouds. So which event takes place when God comes with clouds? It's the second coming. It's the time when you see Christ come with clouds. So, um, ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, so we see when Christ comes with clouds, it's the second coming. And at this point, you have a revelation of Jesus Christ. Following? Anytime, any, and anytime Christ comes with clouds, he's going to reveal himself. And, and when Christ literally comes with, with the clouds, he's literally revealing himself. Every eye shall see him at that point. Following? All right. Go ahead, Quentin. Ah, yes. Anything. Yes. Um, Revelation so 20. A cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the, rest, the race set before us. Amen. So he's lifting off that, that iron yoke from us with this cloud of witnesses that he's coming with. Amen. Amen. So now we are freed from our prison, basically, in the little town of peace. Amen. So, all right. Um, like I said previously, we have the Keep in mind all the rules that the Lord has shown us. There's, there's many rules the Lord has shown us. And the reason why I'm saying that is for this. So at this point, this is Christ coming the second time. And we're placing this at midway, at the end. But however, as we see here with, with, with 18th and 19th, there's a beginning and an ending to each way mark. Following? At, at each event, there's a beginning of the, of the event and an end of the event. And... This is the same with um, Midway. But our first, our, our one witness that we've seen, that we used before, is October 22nd, 1844. What ended on this date? On, on October 22nd, 1844. The 2300 days. It came to an end. But what began at that date? Go ahead. What are you saying? The judgment of the dead. Okay. Let's put 2300 days end. And the um, judgment of the dead begins. Okay. So, just with the second coming of Christ, there's a beginning to his coming and then ending to his coming. And we have it illustrated in this fashion as of now. I'm not going to go into all the other points connected to that, but we'll just... Yes, amen. Okay. And oh, I didn't read this quote. Let's go to 19 MR 40, paragraph 4. Very clear quote that she says this is the second advent of Christ. <clears throat> it says, In the days of the early Christians, Christ came the second time. His first advent was at Bethlehem when, when, when he came as an infant. His second advent was at the what? The Isle of Patmos. So, Revelation 1 is speaking about the second coming of Christ. Ezekiel 1 is talking about the second coming of Christ. Isaiah 6 is talking about the second coming of Christ. Because she connected those, 
those three men as one, that all these visions are one. And all these visions are showing us the second coming of Christ. Isaiah shows us, shows us when, um, when Christ, Christ is high and what? L lifted up. Huh. I have a thought to that now. And, and now this is a view of Christ coming out of his heavenly. Amen. Yes. And then. And now um, John, she, John sees, see, sees the end, but Isaiah sees the beginning of, of the same work of the second coming. Because Daniel 12, 1 tells us that, that Michael shall stand up. This is his second coming, but he's not on the earth yet. This is the beginning of his second coming. But John shows you when, when Christ is on the earth, destroying the earth from sin and sinners. That's the end of his work. So each one of them are showing you the same event. But one showing you the, 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 start, the start of the event, and one is showing you the end. Of the same event. Following? Go ahead. Amen. So, and j just as Rashad just said, all those points are showing Christ's second coming, or the end when you're free, free from sin. Christ's birth, the baptism, um, and what was the other one you said? And, yeah, and the cross as well. Yeah, the end of the cross, ninth hour. And, and those, um, those points, you that his was wrong. Amen. Yes. At, yeah, amen. Yes. Yeah, each point. Okay. So, so she tells us that Christ's second advent was at the Isle of Patmos. So now we're going to look directly now at how we got this 10 in the first place now. Let's go to SSP 177, paragraph 1, under the head in Josiah Litch. All right. Yes, go ahead. You can. Oh, eight minutes? Oh, sorry. All right. Um, can someone read the, the first bold portion? In 1838, Josiah Litch and William Miller, after a careful study of the prophecies, came to the conclusion that on the last date, that on this last date, nations might expect to see the Turkish Sultan surrender his power. This prophecy was published to the world, but there were advents turned sorry which also called to attention the nations of Constantinople. Okay. So, Josiah Litch and Miller in what year? 1838. 1838. And they, they prophesied of the, the fall of the Ottoman Empire in 1838. All right? Okay, next. Next bold portion. Can someone read that as well? A council of these four powers. Okay, so the, the, these four powers in the previous sentence, it was England, Austria, Prussia, and Russia. The, these, these, four, these four powers, these four Christian nations, as this wife says, as we read, uh, actually, I don't know if I have the quote in here, but, but she says these four Christian powers um, made, made the sultan submit to them. And, this, and there was a council that was taken on July 15, 1840. Next, bold and 178, paragraph two of oh, paragraph one of the same, same book. So read that. And the power. And the power, sorry, of Muhammad Ali on August 11th, 
Okay. So the council was met on July 15th, 1840. Then on August 11, 1840, this, this treaty was signed. So, day 11 4, all the four Christian powers. What does it mean? 11. You said Dan 11 what? Four. Okay, okay, yes. Wait, what do you. You saw the four horns, right? I'm um, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing them all together. You know? it's, this is where it's pointing. So all this level is important. It's a sign. All going into the little town of peace. There's a loom that brings you into the little town of peace. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll talk about that after. But, okay. Um. Okay, so Josiah Litch prophesied of it the first time on 1838. And then we're going to go to the next paragraph from GC 334. Paragraph four. She says, um, actually, can someone read this? Read that bold, please. In the year 1840. In the year 1840, another remarkable fulfillment of prophecy excited widespread interest. Two years before Josiah Lynch, one of the leading ministers preaching the Second Advent published an ex exposition of Revelation 9, predicting the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Okay. So. So, so she's, she's telling us here that two years prior, Josiah Litch um, prophesied that, that, um, that the Ottoman Empire was going to fall. So the first one was in, where is this? First one was in 1838. And then we'll look at the date that she has here. As she jumped down to allowing, allowing the first period in the same paragraph. Everyone see that in the middle of the paragraph? Allowing the first period. All right. Kids will read that as well. Allowing the first period of 115 years to have been exactly fulfilled before the coaches ascended the throne by permission of the church. And that the 391 years, 15 days, commenced at the close of the first period, it will end on the 11th of August. When the Ottoman Empire in Constantinople may be expected to be broken, and this, I believe, will be found to be the case. Amen. And an expositor of prophecy, August what? First, 1840. Amen. So Josiah Litch prophesied that it will fall on 1838. Then he also prophesied that it was going to fall on August 1st, 1840. So 10 days before it fell, he gave the exact date when the Ottoman Empire was going to fall. He gave that exact date on August 1st, 1840, 10 days previous. So, um, so this is when, um, this is how we arrived, arrived to this, onto this 10. So there's 10 here where, where now, 10, 10 days before, um, Josiah Litch prophesied that it will fall, and it, and it happened exactly. He got the exact light, light for that time. So in this time period here, in this 10, the Lord's going to send, send light here that will directly tell us of what's going to happen at this point right here. Because when you parallel Millerite history, this point here is August 11, 1840. But our message is not upon time, it's upon events. So at the beginning of the 10, as, as what happened with Josiah Litch and the, and the Millerites, then the Lord will send light exactly what's going to happen on, um, at his second coming. And, and August 11, 1840 is an illustration of Christ's second coming. Because Christ came down with his right foot upon the sea, left foot upon the earth. Following? Okay. Okay, um... I'm going to stop here, actually. i um, not going to go into ninth hour as of now. Just, just going to put that, put that point in place. But I know there's a lot of information.
in a short span of time. But um, if you go back and look at all these points and all the witnesses, you plainly see that this is it, it is so because we're just using exactly what 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 God's word says and was, and 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 what she she says as well. The same same proofs proofs in which she parallels bring us down to these very days. All right. But if there's any other questions, opponents, points, we can answer this um, after. So, that being said, shall we close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we give thanks for this day and for and for and for. For all that you have shown the Lord. Lord, we pray next you may um help us to, to receive all the old light. So that when the new light comes that 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 we might be changed by that as well, Lord. Please, Father, help us to fight sin and self in this day to, to sh show forth Christ that, um, that we might flee, flee from sin, O oh Lord. And we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.